Hey, I was thinking about it. YouTube's taking its time tonight. Oh, man. There we go. I see us now. <laughs> <laughs> and we are live. Welcome to Talking Heads, everyone. Episode 156, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm John. Welcome to the show that sucks less than bite my bits. <laughs> if, if you've never seen the show before, we talk uh, beer, we talk tech, we talk games, pop culture, entertainment, usually some Star Trek, uh, and you are welcome along for the ride. Uh, we broadcast every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time. You can also catch the audio replay in podcast form on Anchor.fm or wherever your favorite podcasts are found. This is a strictly family-friendly show as much as we try, even though we do drink alcohol on the show. Uh, if there is any blue content, which I don't think there will be tonight, we will definitely let you know with a disclaimer beforehand. If you're drinking along with us, alcoholic or not, let us know in the chat and we will give some early show shout outs. All Super Chats are read on the air, assuming they meet our family-friendly criteria. And if you want access to the super secret chat and the super secret after party, please consider joining the Patreon or the float plane. Links are down in the video description. You'll get exclusive access to the Discord server where you can chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all of the hosts from Talking Heads, and become of the ever-growing community over there. Oh, and it's a fun community as it is. It is. It's a lively bunch. It is a, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, it's getting big. It's getting yeah. really big. I mean, and even with the mods, it's like, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Just right now, we have 134 on. I think we have a little over 300 total in the group. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite the party over there. Yeah, um, and and that 130, you know, there's usually a, a bit more of them usually on. Yeah, we uh, we, and, we average about 200 active users per day, which is yeah, insane and for a Discord it's just, server. It's, yeah, it's insane, and it's that's the best part though of the Discord server is there are so many areas and everyone's very active. Yes. So if you like a very active Discord, unlike some other tech channels that have vacuums, um, you know, whatever, this is a very good active one. Yes. Oh, how's it going, everyone? How, how are you doing tonight, tonight, John? Uh, pretty good, you know, just kind of like rushed in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, but other than yep. that, uh, not not too bad, not too bad. Uh, could use some more sleep. I think a lot of people, yeah. but, you know, whatever. <laughs> I was I was actually hoping to get a little bit of a nap in today. Um, so I had had a couple issues yesterday, and I wasn't able to get filming yesterday. And it's like I got to get. A video out in the first half of the week otherwise it's going to have to wait till thursday and friday and then my second half video is going to be screwed for schedule so it's like i, I need to get something out and uh wednesday is usually my take it a little slower days you know stroll into the office you know 9 30 or 10 o'clock instead of you know 8 or 8 30 and uh yeah this morning it was like i woke up at 7 i was in my office at 7 45 and the camera was on at 8. yeah um, oh i i know you uh you messaged me <laughs> <laughs> i know just wanted to make you feel included. <laughs> I'm sitting there like driving to work. I'm like, oh, I know what Jeff's doing. You stink. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed a nice Kavodka stout at 830 this morning. <laughs> it's like my, I have coffee. Jeff has a coffee stout. Coffee stout. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, editing went a little bit long. And every, yeah, just... The day went as the day went. Plus, I watched the AMD event today, so that took another hour out of it. Yeah, it's uh, it was a long day. I, I didn't get a nap in like I had hoped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, working for yourself is just rough sometimes, man. Oh, oh yeah, just, I bet it's yeah. rough. Oh, couldn't, my gosh. Couldn't take, I, couldn't take my my afternoon 90-minute power nap. And yeah, you know, yeah. Had, you had to get up at 8 and crack your that shoes stout. On. Yeah. Yeah. You no, I, like, yeah, you know, sh I, should I? I did walk down and get the mail. I did have to take the slippers off and put actual shoes on. <laughs> so. but should I actually change today? Yeah. Uh, just the top half. Yeah. Uh. Camera only sees here up anyway. That's yeah, fine. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, John, it's Halloween. It is. It is it's Halloween ish. Ish, ish. You know, uh, we won't be doing another one of these uh before halloween comes to fruition uh right. so yeah uh welcome to the halloween show everyone yes uh we, so we john... usually dress up 
we usually dress up. This year is like it doesn't even feel like it Halloween. Doesn't, yeah, no. Well, um, yeah. Yeah, so but we decided to do Halloween themed beers. Yes, and and we're going into this blind. So I have a couple Halloween themed beers. John has a couple Halloween themed beers, and uh, we'll see what the other person brought. And I'm just yeah. glad that I don't have to try whatever John's like four and a half percent pumpkin spice, you know, lager is this time. <laughs> hey, I do have a rum barrel aged one if I need to get it. If I need to break out the like the the ten percent. <laughs> pumpkin spice <laughs> yeah. really doesn't taste like anything but rum uh, no right. actually i think this one i think this one you're probably going to want to try or okay. wish you wish you had it because it's wish a i was there yeah wish you were there because it's at least it's a brewery you really like okay and, my attention. and and you also love the themes of their beers so so this is level brewings oh uh, yeah yeah so uh, I, I need to speak to the manager, Karen. <laughs> so nice. It is a it is their pumpkin spice latte ale. It's a uh, English style brown with lactose, Ooh. pumpkin, and coffee. Ooh. So uh, you're right. I, I saw you got a four pack of that. I didn't see what the la what the label was, but I recognized what? the side of it. Yeah. So. So, but yeah, and then it's also got the the dog from Duck Hunt on the label so i really like that so since level does all of it but then it has the yes. uh, karen symbol on the side um yeah it's it's cool i i really actually I, as soon as i saw this label that they pushed this out i was like i need to have this beer yes no i, I saw that in your car and i went it's, he says it's pumpkin in it and yeah. uh i i saw you got a four pack so i expect one of those in my in my goodie bag when, uh, I, when I next, when next we one. meet I have a, I saved one. Yep. So. All right. Uh, so I'll go next, I guess. Uh, so John insulted me and he goes, what's your Halloween theme beer without pumpkin? Is it Dawn of the Red? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm better than that. Um, I went uh, again for another Oregon brew, but uh, I had this one last year. So this year I got the 2020 edition of okay. Rogue Dead Guy, Dead and Deader. Um, uh, this is the uh, their standard dead guy ale, but it's aged in dead guy whiskey barrels. Um, uh, so Halloween themed. Halloween themed. And special beer, special release. Don't, yeah, yeah. There you go. Not don't pumpkin. at me. Not, Not pumpkin, pumpkin but but it's a bomber and it's a special release beer. Uh, and I I, uh, I got it three weeks ago specifically for the Halloween episode. So you don't have to attack me like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dark Storm says pickle pumpkin spice, John. Ah, uh, no. I'm I'm in John's camp on that one. My, my boss is watching. <laughs> oh man, is that malty? <sighs> yeah, that smells like a nice brown. I don't smell any pumpkin spice, or it actually just smells like a really nice brown. All right, let's scroll back up here. We got a lot of uh, chat, a lot of chat shout outs here. Ooh. Uh, wow, throwing punches right out of the gate. Well, I didn't start this one, so. Um, uh, Sakura, Ooh. drinking some coffee. Excellent. Nice. Uh, James, drinking a uh, cart horse IPA from Old Nation Brewing. Uh, let's see. Questionable Command, drinking Sasquatch Slice of Life New England IPA. Uh, Mitch is drinking a Dr. Pepper. Uh, from Northern Canada, or hello from Northern Canada. I think he was waving. Ah, um, yes, I think that's a... Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, sipping along with Cool Blue Gatorade this evening. That's actually my favorite Gatorade next to Glacier Cherry. Glacier that's that's my number one, and uh, and Cool Blue is number two. I think it was Cool Blue, or I, I think it was Glacier something was Powerade. I really like that one. Nah. I was, yeah, whatever. I like Powerade, Powerade over... Yeah. I like Powerade over Gatorade. Yeah the Coors Light of, of sports drinks. <laughs> or, would that be vita or would that be vitamin water? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, what, what is your compare? What, you, what are you considering uh, uh, Powerade? Budweiser? What, what's funny is the very next comment is drinking a blue Powerade. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's on my side. Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> uh, Skull drinking a fat orange cat 
uh, Fat Orange Cat Brew Company. I don't like Mondays, New England IPA. Uh, Dark Storm, drinking a Dogfish 60. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Fridley is drinking a Sprecher Maple Root Beer. Not sure hey. how I feel about it right now. Uh, Bryce drinking an Imperial Chocolate Coffin Creeper by Arrowhead Ales. Nice. And then he's going to pop open an Alagashi White. Not heard of that one. Alagashi White. Is that, I think that's an Alagashi. Isn't that an Asian beer? Uh, yeah. I don't recall. And then Skull says, wow, three digs in the first, or three digs in the first three minutes. There's actually four. You didn't, you didn't catch the last one. Uh, <laughs> Novella, Anchorage. No, no. Uh, nice. night, night Vision DDH. Uh, I'm jealous. Yeah, I love a good Anchorage. Almost almost everything I have from them is fantastic. I, I don't think I've ever had a bad Anchorage beer. I There was like one, but it was, you know, like a farmhouse stays on, mm -hmm. you know. And it wasn't that it was bad. It was that I paid 12 bucks for it. And I was like, this isn't a $12 beer. Yeah, it's like a $6 beer, but it's, you know. I think that's what was like my only critique of the beer. Otherwise, yeah, I'm on your side. I've had session beers, IPA, and I'm like, this is a good session beer. This is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is a lawnmower beer. Uh, Trevlin wants to know, do craft beers taste anything like Bud Light? I'm not a big drinker and hate, and hate that beer, so I haven't tried anything shown on stream, although they look fantastic. These taste nothing like Bud Light. Um, uh, I am an outspoken critic of Bud Light. And, and most of the domestics. John will drink them. I'll, I'll tolerate them. Right, he'll tolerate them. I won't. I'll, um, I'll tolerate them just for the show. <laughs> right. Um, so, show. so I think I've said this before, but uh, I have a deep-seated hatred of a lot of domestic beers because in Oregon, we have what's called bottle <laughs> return. We have bottle <laughs> refunds. Yep. Uh, and when I was in high school, uh, I got to work in a grocery store for close to a year. And my number one duty in the grocery store was taking care of the bottle return machines, which if you've never been into one of those rooms, um, it immediately smells of six month old domestic rotting beers oh, so and bad. mold and everything yeah. else. And then I have to crawl inside those machines and clean them and gut them. Yep. And do that was my job for 12 months. Um, oh yeah. As well as a number of other tasks no one wanted, you know being 16 and in high school going yeah i'll do anything for money yeah, yeah. pretty much actually what's funny is jeff and i worked at the same store and we never even knew that yeah i think we worked time. like three months apart or something like that yeah like, it was something like, like john that. Was... john left and then i came on like two or three months later yeah and took over his job <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was horrible yeah mm. I, I hated that i know i know exactly what you're talking about what machine been in that room smell i've been in that room i've cleaned yeah. those machines yeah i've cleaned those bins yep. yeah it, it is horrible and the the worst part is most of these cans are like sitting outside for like a month too. Yep. cigarette butts inside of them people yes. use them as ashtrays yep. uh it, it is horrible and this is back when too like there was no cap on the amount you could get back Yep. People would fill these things and get 50, 60 bucks back. Yep. And, five cents uh, at a time. Five cents. Of, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I also have a story working at that grocery store. I know we're way off track, but <laughs> we're in the weeds. This is just going to be one of those shows. Um, we'll get to the AMD news. Don't worry. We'll, we'll probably hit it in about 10 minutes or so. Anyway, uh, so uh, I was emptying the one of the bins uh, that day. And by the way, the bins underneath those are giant plastic pallets. Um, yeah. And so they're the collapsible plastic grocery pallets. Um, and sometimes they were lined, other times they were not. Um, we had one that was lined with cans and uh, the machine broke and I needed to take the cans out. The pallet was about half full. And uh, so I unloaded the cans and uh, the only bin in the back to put them in was a stack up. Now I'm six foot five and fairly strong, or at least I was a lot stronger back in high school. And... Uh, I just went to hurl that bag up into the upper bin. Well, what happened, and I'll go full screen for this one, is I lifted that bag up over my head and I didn't get quite enough of it. And so the bag hit me in the back of the head right here. It caused me to smack my head into the oh. bin that I was trying to load the cans into. And I bit a hole through my bottom lip. Oh, yep. at least you probably got off that day. 
No, I finished but, my shift. I put a bandaid yeah. over it and went back to work. Finish it. Uh, literally a hole in my lip. The sanitation issue is just not Oh, God. Like pero oh, you yeah. peroxided it. <laughs> or at least yep. sanitized it whenever they got some, like, mad dog and just poured it on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can totally see that happening. Yeah, the bins were about six foot high. They were they're yep. about three foot tall each, and so it was double stacked. It was six foot. And, uh, yep, I uh, caught just the, barely grazed the top of my head, but it was enough momentum to throw my head into the bin. And oh, yeah. my I, top tooth went through my bottom lip. Oh, yeah, I hate that. And I've done that, that we, twice. <laughs> actually, I did that once with my top one, yeah. Uh, not with the bottles of cans, but yeah. Right. And then we, I remember always, always having to do that. Your, uh, because this particular grocery store, everyone was required to wear, uh, the uniform was a green apron and, and, and a green bow tie. Yes. And you're, narr so, you're narrowing it down for those who live in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the bow tie gives it away. Um, yep. but you would basically walk away with just, <laughs> black grease gunk all over your apron and God. everyone knew what you did and you just smelled yep. for the rest of the day and yep. it's like uh, uh other, just other jobs carts? yeah uh, other jobs that i had there um i also got to empty the grease traps oh yeah you ever, you ever do that one I, I never had to do that yeah i got to do that i think three times in in 12 months and it's basically you take a uh uh fountain cup like a soda fountain cup Mm -hmm. and you reach down into these grates and you scoop out all of the grease and oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen from, that because i've the sprayed bakery. into it yeah yeah from from the bakery from the meat department and there was one other um uh there's there was was a bakery uh meat department and there was just a regular deli too so yeah because the, there was there was yeah. there was a like a fish and meat area the yeah. the butcher then there yeah. was the deep fried snack area, which was a completely mm -hmm. separate, which was right next to the bakery. Mm -hmm. And then there's the tortilla place. The tortilleria. Yeah, we yeah. had a tortilleria in ours. Oh, God. Those are the best tortillas. So good. <laughs> no one knows what we're talking no. about right now. <laughs> Steve. Steve knows what we're talking Steve about. Steve knows. Yeah. So. Um, so, sorry. Last story, and then we'll get into news. <laughs> um, so, we had a parade one year, and as uh, our store was, I guess, part of the parade or something like that. Oh, we and the knew. and the owner of said store chain uh, wanted to be in the parade, and so he was going to ride a golf cart around and, and whatnot. Um, well, we were also going to uh, tow the mascot of the store. I don't know if you ever knew what the mascot was. It's a giant bear. Yeah. Uh, so someone had to dress up as the bear, not me. Um, and and the owner of the company was going to drive the mascot around in the parade in, in a golf cart. But there was a trailer that went on the back so the bear could ride on the trailer. I was getting the trailer hooked up to the golf cart and the owner of the company came by and, and was like trying to help. And he ended up <sighs> dropping the hitch on the back of my head. <laughs> oh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, speaking of owner stories, though, thanks. Buddy. So, same owner. Um, there was a policy at this store that you could not have men could not have hair, um, <clears throat> uh, basically lower than their shoulders. Right. But it's specifically stated in the manual back of your hair. Yeah. And uh, it was very fine print. And so I remember that. So I grew the front of my hair. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> and my back, my back was just, just like right above the shoulders. But the front of my hair was below. And he comes up to me and is like, you need to cut your hair, kid. You look like a, you know, hippie or, you know, yeah. something along that lines. You know, he, he tried being nice, but way, he was like, like 84 or something yeah, like that. He was time. About, um, uh, and so my managers were like, and the owners were all really angry at me. And I was like, here's the manual. I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, I always found it funny that, uh, I, I kept even back then I was like, no, I, I'm going to grow the front of my hair. I basically had a reverse mullet. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Super chat. We got a $10 donation from Zach. Um, oh, is that Zach Sutner? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Ban him. <laughs> Oh, is that ban oh, is that your boss? Yeah, ban him. <laughs> <laughs> you could give me that money. I'll take the money. Yeah. You could tip me that, Zach. I had to suffer through beers that you bought. So <laughs> you haven't I, had I, to ha haven't for a while, but Exactly. So, you know, 
I can't wait to back. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be one of your awesome special float plane uh, videos. Uh, is, Chewing through John's backlog. You, yeah. You're going to have to go through all of that. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. a featured video right there. I will waste a hundred dollars of the beers. Just be like, you have to at least take a good chug of every one of these. You know what? And because it's on float plane, I don't have to worry about demonetization on YouTube. There you go. Or getting content or guideline strikes. So <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> um, I still won't take donations to do shots, but uh, but a, a video where exclusively I get drunk to do something. Oh yeah, that's going on float plane. So if you want to join that, <laughs> the link. Um, I don't think my it's in the video description right now because I think I just added it last week, but I'll make sure it gets into the standard placement. Um. So yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that's been enough chit chat. Yep. Let's get into the news and let's just jump right into the big story of the week. Okay. And that happened this morning. Uh, that is AMD finally took the curtain off of Big Navi. Um, and man, oh, oh man, did AMD throw a hammer down. Oh yeah. Um, we were all thrilled with the... Uh, announcement and early reviews of the RTX 3000 series of the, the 3080 and the 3090 um, because price to performance for what you got over the last four years is mind-bogglingly better. Um, we have not had a graphics upgrade in truth since Pascal, uh, since we went from the 900 series to the 1000 series, from Maxwell to Pascal. Um, and Turing was pretty much a bust. You got the exact same performance for the exact same money and they threw a fancy feature on it and tried to sell you on software um, with with ray tracing. And not many people adopted ray tracing and not many people used the features. Nope. And so ended, you ended up paying a lot more money for the same amount of performance in a lot of cases. Uh, when Ampere came out, 3000 series, um, wow, all of a sudden you're getting what you got for $1,200 the last two generations in the 1080 Ti and the and the 2080 Ti. And it's down to 500 bucks in the in the 20, in the 3070s. In the 3070s, yeah. Although no one can buy any. <laughs> <laughs> they don't exist for all it's, intents and it's purposes. It's like a rare Pokemon. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like catching Mewtwo in, in uh, the original. <laughs> yeah. You basically, they need to make a, a video game, uh, like a mobile app, where you can like walk around and hopefully find an RTX 80. Just so you have to have your phone up, and is it could be RTX augmented 80? reality, and you, yeah. have, you have to drive by all the Best Buys and Micro Centers to see if, if one <laughs> like if spawns one in the wild. Pop up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's one. Ah, oh, damn it! Someone else got it. I think you're onto something there, John. I think that could be a game. Um. But yeah, uh, I have not been able to get a hold of one, buying it or getting a hold of all of my contacts in the industry and saying, can I review one? Can I borrow one? I can't get my hands on one right now. Um, and so for all intents and purposes, the Ampere launch, as impressive as it is, price to performance, it has been a 100% paper launch. They're not in the wild. There's not enough of them in the wild to call this a card launch. Mm -mm. Um so and even the third party ones right yeah there, there are no cards really in the wild um you can just camp outside micro center yeah but i have to drive where's the closest micro center to me um i think there's one in san jose let me see um there's the ones in california Tustin, California. Yeah, that's it. Ah, that's 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 like delivering a computer to a, yeah. you know that's just down the road. Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, it's down by Santa Ana. Oh yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, South Los Angeles. That's my closest <laughs> one. That's a yep. that's a road that's a couple road trip videos. That's got a road trip float plane video. Yep. Yeah, can pick up a. It's only thirteen hours. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. You could do a review on is it worth it to drive down there, 
pay it and you know then get it is that yep. worth it let's see store locations for micro center um here we go uh, they are in California, Colorado, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Virginia. And the one store in California is, like I said, south of Santa Ana in Tustin. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, the next closest one to me would be Denver, Colorado. <laughs> it's so... good beer. Hey, I, 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 my brother lives there, so we can free stay. I'd, I'd rather drive another hour south and go to San Diego. Yeah. Like, if we're going to do it, <laughs> do it right. <laughs> yeah, but Denver's got some pretty good beers. I don't want to visit Denver in November. Yeah. I want to go to San Diego in November. Yeah, you don't like the snow? You don't like the cold? Nope. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll, we'll that, that's, a complete, we'll... that's a complete lie. I love the snow and I love the cold. But I also want to escape it at certain times of the year. <laughs> well, we'll take the Z car and we can like tail it. <laughs> yeah, I still got to get south of the Siskiyous though. <laughs> what about fries? <laughs> oh yeah, they're fully stocked. For all intents and purposes, fries does not exist either. My best case scenario is that one of the two best buys within driving distance of me happens to get one, and By luck. the one and the one here in Salem doesn't carry crap. Yeah, there's one right by me. They and, carry uh, TVs, and that's it. Yeah, we get we get TVs and somehow dishwashing and kitchen appliances. <laughs> it's like if you want a dishwasher and smart t uh, refrigerator, you go to Best yeah. Buy. Yeah, that's that's it. But that's literally the only other place that I can buy consumer, you know, PC consumer electronics. Yeah, locally. Yep. Yeah, know. there's nothing. Incoming fries rant in three, two. No, I I held myself. I held it off because we need to get back into the news of the day, which is the RX 6000s. Yes. So like I said, the Ampere cards for all intents and purposes have been a paper launch. They they don't exist. No one has them. Um, at least not in great enough numbers to call it a launch. Um, now there's no official word on the availability of the RX 6000s, but what we do have is pricing models and expected performance. And man, oh man, they are competing. Should we get on the hype train? Yeah, that's the I big know. question. Is should we get on the hype train? Um, I'm not ready to say jump on it and leave everything behind, but I am saying pack a bag. Have, I, I, have, I, have I, your I, hat yeah, ready. Yeah, I'm saying you you, <laughs> you at least save some money for to reserve a ticket. You know, um, prep. Yeah. There, there's, there's some definite eyebrow raising, serious eyebrow raising of like, oh, I'm going to look at the, what's that meme, you know, where the girl and the guy and he looks to the side, like, there's some of that really going on here. Yeah. Well, the meme going around today has been the, uh, uh, the distracted boyfriend with the RTX yeah. 3090 with that, his arm yeah. around and he's looking at the RX 6000 series. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. That I means that yeah. really is it because really even we'll probably get we'll get into specs and everything later but even if this holds up to most of the specs that they're talking about all yep. they have to do is just provide it it yep. has to be out there they'll win that's yep. it that's that's all they have to do yeah whether uh, it's better or not they just have to it has to be out there correct so let's go over the 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 models really quick we'll start at the bottom and we'll go to the top okay. uh the bottom is the only one that i felt is going to be a toss-up. Um, they didn't necessarily win the market over with this particular graphics card. This is the RX 6800. Um, it has 60 compute units, 60 ray accelerators. So there is hardware accelerated ray tracing in these cards now. Um, it has a game frequency up to eight, uh, 1815 megahertz, uh, 128 megabytes of infinity cache, which is the, the brand new like bee's knees feature. Um, max memory of 16 gigabytes. Likely there will be an eight and a 16 gigabyte variant. Uh, and prices on this one will start at $580. Now they showed off some expected performance numbers from this and AMD for the most part has been fairly honest with their slides. Uh, I will say for the last couple of announcements that they've done. Um, and so I tend to just say, I'm going to take them kind of at their word. 
Whereas when NVIDIA comes out and says up to two times performance, you go, yeah, in this one task that this card was made to do two times better. Um, but overall, it's 30% better, right? That's been the story. With AMD, they've been giving a lot more real-world honest numbers. Now, still wait for benchmarks. But this card is $580. It's going to be competing directly with the uh, RTX 3070, uh, which is a $499 card. Likely board partner cards are going to be pushing upwards of $600. Um, but it's going to be right in that same price bracket. Yeah. Um, they AMD compared the RX 6800 to the 2080 Ti. And they showed it essentially trading blows, which is the same thing that NVIDIA showed with the RTX 3070, was trading blows with the previous flagship NVIDIA card. Um, and so, correlation, <laughs> uh, I expect the RX 6800 to trade blows with the RTX 3070 at very, very similar price points. Well, um, close. I mean, it's it's $80 difference. $80 difference, but... When's the last time you saw an NVIDIA card sell at the MSRP? Because yeah, the other the other part of this, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but NVIDIA has been, and I think Linus put this best, directly competing with their board partners now. Um, and and the, to be quite honest, they're screwing them over. Uh, it's I don't know what NVIDIA's long term plan is, but it's a crappy business practice right now. Um, you know, board partners not getting drivers until after reviewers have have cards in hand from the board partners that built them. You know, crap like that. Uh, in this case, NVIDIA lifted the embargo for the RTX 3070 Founders Edition card so they could get a lead on the AMD thing and the board partner uh, embargo lifts tomorrow. And so NVIDIA was trying to like dominate the news cycle and also get their card out there first. Um, yeah, it's just weird. Uh, but NVIDIA says 499. I say bull. I say 560 to 650 is probably what you'll be expecting this card to range in. I would expect AMD to come out right around the 580 to $600 price point and then upwards of 650 for, you know, board partner cards. Yeah. So similar price brackets, I think. Founders Edition not included. Um, so, because it's only going to be trading blows and the MSRP is $80 more, you are correct there, there's a chance the NVIDIA could be the better value out of these two. Although, AMD is also kind of taking the NVINC lead that NVIDIA had with, with video encoding out of the equation as AMD is now baking an AV1 encoding, which is a far better encoder, and NVIDIA will be supporting that as well, and it should very well become the industry standard within the next, you know, six months. Um, uh, and both cards will be capable of it. Uh, both yeah. series of cards, 3,000 and and, uh, and 6,000 from AMD. Um, so I, I think that's going to be a non-factor. In, in the past, for like video editing content, especially now that Adobe supports CUDA acceleration, I've always recommended just go with, with NVIDIA because you will get better performance in Premiere. Now, if all of a sudden AV1 is adopted by Adobe inside of Premiere for, for workflow, you can go with whatever the best value is for you. Um, it might be the 3070. It might be the 6800. Um, you know, we'll see. Well, the other thing, too, is the 6800, the other comparison, too. Now, we don't know the, like what the price, if this is the lower end model or what. But you said that there's also a max of 16 gigs where the tw uh, 30 or 3070. 3070. Yeah. Eight? Eight is, is maxed out at eight. Um, yeah. Now, AMD said up to 16 gigs. I expect the eight gigabyte model to come out at that $580 price point. Yeah, and, and that's the 16 kind of what gig I was... model to maybe be 650 or 700. Um, you know, now, see, when, that's when where I think done. that 680, that version of the 680 is like, oh, that's very appealing. Right. Especially if you're someone who has run into, you know, video memory issues running Premiere before. Yeah. Um, I've run into it a couple of times. Not not a ton. I do have 8 gigabytes of RAM, but I also, you know, work on ProRes LT, ProRes Proxy, and ProRes RAW. So, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, some heavy-duty codecs. And, and they do need a little bit of horsepower to, to go through them. 
Um, second card that we'll get to is the next step up, and that is the uh, Radeon RX 6800 XT. Uh, this one has 72 compute units and 72 ray accelerators. Uh, a game frequency clock of up to 2000 megahertz, so two gigahertz out of the box. And they were also speculating upwards of like 2400 megahertz max boost clock. Um, so that's kind of insane. Yeah. Uh, when you when you break it down. Um, well, and they were saying though that the boost clock is it's most likely be going to be 20, like one of those 2250. Yeah. yeah, that's like the peak, and it's going to peak really fast. It's not going to be right. It's going to hold 2250. You know, with well, the way the boost frequencies work is with proper cooling and and uh and power headroom yes you could and so if they're claiming 2250 max boost out of the box mm. that's pretty mm. good yeah <laughs> i'm gonna put those in air quotes <laughs> yeah. and again grain of salt yeah grain of salt yeah. being everything we're, we're so. just going off numbers and a little bit of speculation here because we can do speculation on this show <laughs> yeah well i mean i guess i guess the only reason i say this is speculation because similar things about the um you know 3080 3090 uh mm. have come out where those specs were like oh yeah yeah they peak at this uh oh no oh, it crashes after two minutes you know uh, or there were it mostly hit all of the marks it has hit but i'm just now yeah. a little bit more uh optimistic or, right. or pessimistic all right so the other interesting thing was the 6800 xt draws 300 watts of power now that actually undercuts nvidia's card the 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 3080 which is competing directly against it um by 50 watts the uh yeah. the 3080 draws 350 watts of power um the other interesting thing is the 6800 xt only comes with 16 gigs of ram and is 650 bucks, 649. Yeah, and the pins on the back end. <laughs> the power pin is on the back or on the, the oh, right. bottom on of the, the card. On, yeah, on the founder's edition card. <laughs> oh, the founder's edition of sure. the card. Or the AMD <laughs> reference card, I guess. Yeah. More appropriately. Like, yeah, from what from what they showed us, I was just found that to be a, a point every reviewer made was like, thank you for having the pin at the back. End. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially when they go wider instead of thicker, which, I again, I appreciate them trying to cram this into a two-slot card. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm for one, sick of triple-slot cards, especially triple-slot cards that don't need to be triple-thick. <laughs> and there's the rant alert. There's the rant. Here's the rant. Um, there is no reason in the world for... Uh, What's a good card to call out here? Um, ooh, I know. Uh, the Asus uh, ROG Strix 5700. I have one of those. Or no, the 5500. There we go. 5500. 170 watt TDP, something like that. Triple thick card. Massive copper block. Six heat pipes. It's two and a half slots thick. There's no reason in the world that card should ever be that thick. Especially when we used to cool, you know, 170 watts, a la a GTX 1060 3 gig with a little aluminum, you know, fin array about this big. Yeah. You know, you know the crap that we give Intel for for having, you know, crappy stock coolers. They would slap essentially that onto a GTX 1060, throw it out the door, and call it good. And and all of a sudden, you can't cool 170 watts with, you know, staying in the confines of a two slot. Come on. Well, they wanted to keep it at like, you know, 50 degrees at all times. The thing <laughs> is, they still didn't. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Not to call out Asus, I'm calling out everyone. That was just the first card that came to mind. But come on, when you go from the, the you know, RX 580, which was a 225 watt, 250 watt card, and all of a sudden you're undercutting that wattage by, you know, 70 watts. And the cooler is two and a half times the size of the last one. Come on, we don't need that. You got a single eight pin connection. There's no reason for it. <laughs> uh, does it ran run fanless most of the time at least? No, it didn't. Although it ran fairly quiet. It also wasn't the quietest card I've ever had. Um, so, yeah. Will Adobe Premiere take advantage of the new AMD cards coming out? That's entirely up to Adobe. 
Yeah. Um, I hope so. Uh, but again, this is a question of market share. Um, the reason NVIDIA gets all of the driver optimizations for enterprise and all of the secret sauce in their drivers and everything else is because NVIDIA has ruled the roost. They have owned the market share. And why would you spend 50% of your coding time for 15% of the market? It doesn't make any sense, does it? So NVIDIA gets the drivers and gets the special sauce and you have to buy NVIDIA to take advantage of those processes. Now, if AMD makes headroom and, and makes serious headroom, and I mean serious headroom, um, like they've done in the CPU market, if all of a sudden they prove they are competitive and they prove that people will buy them, um, then yes, they will get support. Absolutely. But I think these are the, the <clears throat> I think these are the first cards that'll probably do that. This is almost like seeing, I wouldn't say Ryzen, but like or at least Ryzen Gen 2, uh, similar aspects for their graphics cards. Mm -hmm. This is, I think AMD's serious, serious push and almost skipping a generation of good graphics cards. Yes. Uh, and this I is like showing us, we have what it takes to compete on all ends yeah. uh so you know you want an all amd setup they want that now and for the first time in my life i can legitimately say i can build an all amd workstation and it is the best workstation that money can buy yeah That's not once in my life has that been possible no it's always like well it's a bang for your buck i mean literally yeah five years ago would have been it, it, it's a better bang for your buck but the performance isn't really there right technically it'll get you where you need to go yeah but within five five years mm -hmm. it's like a rocket yes he was texting me yeah it's me oh aliexpress as if i haven't <laughs> bought enough from them <sighs> we recommend this item to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's basically what it was it was a two dollar coupon on like a fifty dollar purchase thanks guys <laughs> hey that's another graphics card go see if you can find a uh, uh 3070 for 50 bucks on aliexpress that's my next video right yeah yeah you need to go find it. this is what uh, aliexpress is 3080 clocks in at <laughs> uh when was the last high the last high when they competed at the top end of nvidia's consumer cards was the 7990 um and you could kind of throw the R9 Nano in there because it kind of competed with the 1080 Ti, but God, that was a horrible card. Um, I mean, it works, but it also drew 400 plus watts required an AIO. Um, yeah, the, the R9 Nano, I think was kind of the last hurrah. But if you remember the CPUs they were putting out during that day, that was peak FX time. That was Bulldozer and and uh, and whatever else. Um, can't even remember the second name, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was an architecture that was not doing well. Um, was just getting, just beat up. Uh, last time that they were on top for CPUs was like 2004 with the Athlon X2 series, Athlon 64 and Athlon X2s starting to come out. And uh, they led for like a year and a half and then Intel came out with their core duo and never looked yeah. back. And well, AMD, until, would, until AMD would compete a couple times. They, they would come up with some product, but Intel always sucker punched them two months later. Um, and that was only until like 2011. And then from 2011 to 2017, uh, Intel ruled the roost. And Ryzen finally started making them compete in a couple areas. They had to compete in workstation chips. They had to compete with, with you know, high thread count chips. You know, eight cores became a standard uh not not, not a thousand dollar exception yeah steamroller bolt those are powered pile driver thank you yeah yep um but yeah uh and during the the 2004 era nvidia ruled the roost for graphics cards um and so there was no i mean there was some competition but if you wanted the best system it was an amd processor and an nvidia graphics card um if you wanted the best system last year it was an intel cpu and an nvidia graphics card and for the last you know gosh what was that seven eight years since the 7990 was out uh it's been an nvidia graphics card has been your choice 
uh, about the same run that Intel had as, you know, undisputed champion above all. Yeah. And now all of a sudden with the release of Ryzen 5000 and, and Big Navi, we're looking at the potential, especially um, depending on your workload and, and your use case. Yeah. This could be a complete sweep. Right. So and we haven't even gotten into Threadripper yet. No, no. Like, and we, we haven't even talked about the last card too. Right. Like Threadripper on Zen 3, it's still coming. <laughs> yeah. You, you thought they, they dropped they... a hammer with 20% IPC improvement from Zen 2 to Zen 3 with their 16 core 5950X? Oh, just wait until the 5990WX drops. Oh, and then didn't they wait. say they're going to announce that before the end of the year too? Mm-hmm. Or at least, at least announce something about it. They're going to tease not, it. At they're least. going to tease it. They're not going right. to release release it, but they'll at least tease it with probably maybe some specs of some kind. Mm -hmm. Or or at least benchmarks. Yep. Maybe not specs, but at least benchmarks. Be like, hey, look what I can do. But yeah. But yeah. So And then there's still the third the third card that was talked the about card, today. The third card, which is the exciting one. Um, and... I usually get pumped for, for mid-range competition. I pay attention to the high-end stuff as well. But this one has my juices flown because I don't think anyone expected this one. I don't think anyone expected AMD to come out and say, we compete with the 3090 with a straight face. Like a legitimate. I, it's not even like, oh, in this, this one quarter. No, a right. legitimate. No, like across the board. Across the we board, compete it competes. with the 3090. Right. Um, the only thing, the only thing they don't compete in in it is the RAM. But right. in the speed, they, I think, they, I think they outperform it in speed technically. You know, in their uh, base well, clock. in well, in raw megahertz, yes, they're faster. But that you can't measure one to the other on that. Yeah, it's architecture differences, manufacturing differences, etc. Um, what you have to measure is raw performance and performance in games and driver optimizations and everything else. Everything goes into benchmarking the cards. Um, however, AMD did say on identical systems, only swapping out the 2080 Ti for the RX 6900 XT, which is the card we're talking about, which has 80 compute units, 80 ray accelerators, game frequency of 2000 megahertz, 128 megabytes of infinity cache, and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Um, it goes blow for blow with a 3090. Yeah. And it's a thousand bucks. It's 999. It's 500 bucks cheaper. Yeah. Um, that's insane. And no one, no one saw that one coming. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, I thought, you know what? They, they reached where the 1080 to 1080 ti was last generation with the 5600 or 5700 xt they were competing with the 2070 super and am or nvidia came out with the 2080 ti just to go f you and and make sure that the bar was set so far out of reach that no one could question it and i think that's kind of what M nvidia expected to do with the 3090 that's what that one felt like to me it, it really felt like yeah we were we pushed it we went to mars Screw right the moon, we, we're we, going to we mars. took we took our existing flagship we knocked that down to 500 bucks and then we set a new bar with the 2080 oh and by the way here's the flag like you said on mars with the 3090 good luck yeah and amd hit it <laughs> and you're like oh yeah i could do that right there you go Oh you yeah, know. we have one of those too, by the way. Oh, and it's five hundred dollars <laughs> cheaper. Yeah. Um, yeah. So competition's and, back, ladies and gentlemen. And and still at three hundred watts. It's still at three hundred watts, right? Same, so, same. Uh, power TDP consumption. essentially yeah. power consumption as the the sixty eight hundred XT. Competition is back, and it's a good yep. thing. Oh yeah, no. Uh, I think they purposely went with a nine 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 to say it is below a thousand dollars. No, but you know, again, you when it comes out, who knows? Mm -hmm. But at least for the launch price, they had they wanted to make it that big of a gap, that big of right. a jump of it is. You know, technically, you might get that one two percent three percent better performance on some things and like you said when they put it against it there were some of the uh, at least the graphs and, and stuff that they said some games performed even a little bit better 
mm-hmm. than the 3090. Otherwise, it was either even or like just a hair. We're talking a hair below it. But well, for, it, it was a hair below, hair above. I mean, it, yeah, it went both it just, ways. It went, it went both chart. ways. Yeah. So, um, really, the only thing that the 3090 would give you is that extra eight gigs of RAM. And it's only like basically you're just paying for an ultra workstation if you're right. doing video 3D graphic rendering. Otherwise, this 16 gigs, um, that's going to be the standard mm-hmm. for $1,000 that's you you're probably not gonna do it. an amateur semi semi not amateur but you know semi professional someone like jeff or you know linus or half the people 16 gigs is probably going to do everything they need yeah. um they're yeah, not it, it's, all, it's only story. when you right it's only when you get into the high-end 3d animation cad etc yeah that you're gonna and and i mean high-end 3d animation where you're gonna drive you know vram usages well over 20 gigs um so for most people uh for for even most professionals 16 gigs is probably going to be okay for a while yeah so and i believe this is actually still only at that two i think they call it two and a quarter slot is what they said it was going to take up so still at a two two slot right uh, size yeah or two and a half see, is what they call yeah, it you can see like in these right here so the the 6800 is back here and the 6900 is in front and so the 6900 is a two and a quarter slot quarter yeah so they said something like two and a half two and a quarter uh, i know i know it's I, 300 watts but we've done this before we've cooled 300 watts before in two slot coolers there's no reason for this crap <laughs> yeah yeah uh, got a couple super chats here. We got Fellstone, five dollar donation. Thank you. Uh, if the sixty eight hundred XT is MSRP six fifty, then the sixty eight hundred sixteen gig won't be too won't get too close to that. I think it will. I think it still will. Um, because now they said the they were a little coy with the sixty eight hundred XT whether it was coming with sixteen gigs or whether it was a max of sixteen gigs. And so again, it could be an eight and a sixteen split because they've done that with. The, the RX 580, that's not unprecedented for their top tier card to come in four and eight gig variants or eight and 16 gig variants. And so um, they haven't done it. They didn't do it the last generation with the Radeon 7 and, and with the, the 5700, but it's also not unprecedented for AMD to have multiple tiers of memory for people who need less and need more and use it as a cost-saving measure uh, for the consumer because not every consumer needs 16 gigs. You know, if you're just gaming, eight gigs is probably just fine, especially if you're just going for 1080p high frame rates. If you're going for 1440 and 4K gaming, yeah, you probably need 16. So. Yeah, I, no, I, I very, very happy with these. Um, again, though, just want to see what happens on launch date. Now, two of these they're stating are going to be launched really, really soon. Uh, yeah. November 15th. What, yeah, two weeks, three weeks, yep. three weeks, yep. two and a half weeks, technically. Half weeks. Yep. Uh, now, again, too, hopefully they're actually out there. And the third one is going to be released on the 8th. All of these will be available for the Christmas season. So tell your significant other you want an upgrade on your PC <laughs> if they're out there. I have $1,000 uh, in my <laughs> in, a, in a secret fund right now. Uh, so if I don't yeah, get so a like, 6900 XT, if I don't XT, get one to review, I'm buying one. If I don't get a 6900 XT, I will have a 6900 XT. <laughs> um, Work expense, right? So, you got to write off all those profits by the end of the year. So yep, that's how self-employment Jeff's works. Just gonna start buying all this beer and liquor. <laughs> Screw parts, like, uh, honey. I just can't find a 3090. I gotta go to the liquor store to do tax write-offs. I have fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> top shelf only, I guess. <laughs> Oh God, I could run up a $1,500 tab at a liquor store. <laughs> I've come close before. <laughs> oh, that Johnny Walker. I, I, I'll take two, I guess. Jeez, my bad. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, uh, I do see in some circumstances the 6800 coming close to the the price point of the 6800 XT because they're already close. They're only $70 apart. It's 580 versus 650 now that's msrp and that's unknown ram uh variants at both price points and so we'll see is 650 8 gigs on the 6800 xt or is 
770, you know, $800, 16 gigs on the 6800 XT. Yeah. I don't think we know that yet. All we know is that they have up to 16 gigs of memory and they are starting at 580 and 650. That's what we know. And we do know that the 6900 XT is coming with 16 gigs at a thousand bucks. That's what we know. Uh, Big Big Spoon, $5. What is that random grinding noise? Who is making espresso? Oh, that's just my 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 Tinder app. Sorry. <laughs> zzz, zzz, yeah, zzz. It's been just going off like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Spoon, both of them are running off a generator. <laughs> <laughs> Hops yes. and Brews is running his fridge with his blender. Thought, so, well, all that pumpkin beer needs cooling somehow. That's right. There's a lot of it. There is a lot of it. A lot of it. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um. So yeah, I think that was. That basically covers the gist of it because we didn't. There wasn't a whole lot. It was again just here's the basic set. It stats. Mm -hmm. It was a basic launch. I yep. mean, you don't get you know actual visual testing and. and it was a great, great tease. Um, we got some good information. Everyone's very happy with it. And the fact that it's going to be released very, very soon means that we're probably going to be seeing some videos within two weeks from people yep. that they sent it out. So uh, yep. follow follow your favorite tech tuber because they're probably going to get some. You know, um, Hopefully, Jeff will get some. If not, it'll be right around the corner. So I'm, I'm starting to... I, I don't mean to call anyone out if anyone is watching because I know a couple watch, but I'm kind of in that range where I have enough subscribers and enough viewership. Um, I'm starting to get slightly offended when I don't get sampled. I, I, I'm I trying very, very hard not to get too big for my own boots here, but it's it's in that, like, really, so-and-so got a card? Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, I was offered a card. I was just like, nah, I do beer. Yeah. Yeah. It's not my it's demographic. Not my, it's not my demographic. I mean, it's like, eh. Yeah. So send it to Jason. <laughs> <laughs> he needs the help. I'm not there yet. Um, and I know time fixes everything. And, and relatively, I'm still kind of a new outlet. I have three years is all I've been at this. Um, but, but yeah, I'm starting to get like that. Really? I, I'm not big enough for one yet? God. Come on, NVIDIA. Come on, AMD. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, basically, you just, yeah, you need me there to schmooze them. So we need, we that's the only problem. Need, is we, need, we need those I, live I, events again. Now, now, John, know this at your core that I mean no offense by this, <laughs> but I need Rhett there to schmooze them. <laughs> right? Uh, you know I'm right. Okay, depending upon the, how they are, maybe... I mean, are they looking for a good time? <laughs> <laughs> Swipe left. <laughs> I mean, maybe you never know. Right. <sighs> John's back there rubbing their shoulders. What do you need? <laughs> <laughs> I can get it for you. Oh, yeah. You like that? Uh, All I need is a, a little deeper. XT. A little deeper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yep. being just like the janitor. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> oh, my bad. Oh, anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> um, don't get on the hype train with all of your luggage yet. But at the same time, AMD has been making some very bold claims for the last three years with a lot of their products. Most of them have panned out. Um, if you look at the original Ryzen launch, at the Zen 2 launch, at the Epic launch, especially Epic Rome, Epic, you know, Gen 2, and then, uh, you know, Ryzen 2nd or 3rd Gen, those claims have all worked out. Um, maybe not so much with uh, the RX 590, maybe not so much with the RX 5000 series as a whole, um, but I think a lot of the, the disappointment over the 5000 series graphics cards were over the Turing cards, which kind of set the bar a little bit further forward. Now, AMD 
competed price to performance, but they didn't compete at the very top end. They topped out at the 5700 XT, which was which NVIDIA is trying to brand as their mid-tier card at $500. Now, to be fair, NVIDIA also moved the bar with what's considered a mid-tier card. Um, you know, the 2070 became the 80, and the 80 became the TI, and the TI became the Titan, and, and all of a sudden the Titan was like way the hell out in front. Um, and all of a sudden AMD came out just a generation later, and it seems to have leveled the playing field, and that's exciting. So, wait for reviews, but have your bags packed. All right, uh, let's jump back to the top of our notes. Back before we got into the weeds with... Uh, in, into the weeds of a grocery store rant. Being hit, being hit in the head with a golf cart trailer and biting a hole <laughs> through my lip. Both great stories. Uh, we talked about the, the launch of Is this. Is this live and... tech up? Yes, this is live tech up. <laughs> I'm reading you. I see you. <laughs> uh, we, we talked about this, and we were both very excited of the aspect of this was the SpaceX program, mm -hmm. the uh, Starlink Satellite Global Internet Services, providing, I believe it was, what, a gig? Uh, Supposedly? They're saying they're going to be delivering up to gig. Up to gig. Uh, yeah. Anywhere, theoretically, could be. Um, Correct. So, but prices, the initial price of uh, basically being a test person has come out. Yes. So Starlink, for those who don't know, is the Elon Musk brainchild. Um, it's, and it's part of SpaceX, uh, part of the SpaceX umbrella. Um, and they are launching hundreds of satellites up into orbit to provide satellite internet service for basically anywhere that you need it. Uh, and the aim of this is not to displace like Verizon Fios and Comcast and Cox, although I hope that eventually happens. Um, it's actually to provide rural broadband service, which has not been available to date. Um, yeah. If you look at what you can actually get out in the middle of nowhere, and this is alluded to in the plan name, by the way, it is called the Better Than Nothing Beta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the name of the plan. And the reason they named the plan that is, John, have you ever looked at HughesNet? Yes, I have it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, not here, but... At the farm? At the farm. At the farm, yeah. At the farm, um, yeah. So, John, can I can I ask you a personal question and what you pay and what kind of service is coming out of it, that? It, I, I get, so I pay 50% more than what uh, Starlink is offering, and I get... Uh, Theoretically, 10. 10. 10. Right. Theoretically, 10 down. I can tell you, you don't get that. I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I'm, 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 don't, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> I'm going to say the over under is three megs down and 128K up. No, no, not that low. Not that not low. That low? Uh, no, it's it's usually about between five and eight. Eight is a good, good, okay. nice, sun, nice sunny day. Then they've improved since last time I tested them. Yes. So, and I got a nice sunny day. I'll get about eight. And I'm like right next to the, the router, you know, right. um, and, and no one, nothing is going, you know, I, I just hit test and that's it. You know, that's the only thing. Um, the moment one device is hooked up to that thing, it, it drops down. Yeah. Three to four, yep. you know, so you can have one, one device going. <laughs> um, that's about it. Yeah. And I think, I think up, I haven't seen more than one. Right. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 150 bucks for 10 meg by one meg service. Um, and what's your monthly cap, by the way? What's your bandwidth cap? Uh, 50? Uh, no, that that's with the, uh, I think it's 100. 100? They gave, they gave us 100 gigs. Okay, okay. So depending on your region, the worst pricing that I've heard of is... 175 a month for three meg by one meg and you have a 20 gig cap that's the worst region that i've actually received a quote for <laughs> personally yeah within the last four years i i did some shopping for for various clients and that's the quote that i received um so there was some feedback on the it's better than nothing uh beta on the plan because it came out at $99 for 
for 100 megs down, uh, and you you have a $499 upfront cost to get the kit itself, which is the satellite and the alignment kit yeah. and whatnot, and you install. So it's not like you know 590 or 400 500 bucks brings and an installer to your there, house. Yeah. Right. No, they send you a satellite dish and and some screws and say good luck. Um, but everyone went, oh my god, that's just absurdly expensive. You have never priced out satellite internet then. This is mm -hmm. not to displace your one gig FIOS connection. This is to get internet to the people who have never had it before, who no, have never uh, had true broadband internet before. As soon as I saw this, I was like, 500 bucks, huh? Yeah. That ain't bad. Ain't bad. <laughs> right. I mean, because if this works out from what I'm paying, I'll make my money back in, you know, uh, a year because it's right. 50 bucks less a month. It's 50 bucks less a month. It's 10 months. Yeah. That's all that is. Right. So, and so to people who have had or currently have satellite internet service, that's a bargain. Mm -hmm. That is the best price that has ever been presented. No data cap either, by the way. Yeah. 100 megs, 100 megs down. I don't know how many up, but no data cap at all. No. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good deal. Um, they have said right now the... Latency is actually pretty acceptable. It's down about 30 milliseconds, which is about what you'd expect over a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and they're actually hoping to get it into the sub-20s here uh, before too long, um, which is actually just... It's not that far off from a lot of wired connections around. Um, most of the time, my wired connection here gets me about eight, 15 to 18. Um, on some of the very high-end fiber installs that I used to do, we would get eight. Yeah. Uh, sometimes three at like two in the morning. I'd get three millisecond. Um, but you consider 30 milliseconds, 100 megs down. All I want to do is watch Netflix. Yeah. Or, I mean, that, that's what these things are. This, is, this isn't right. for, you know, big YouTube streamers or doing live events or, you know, big gamers or anything. This is literally just... I need to go to a web page to order something from Amazon to because I'm in the middle of nowhere right. and it's cheaper for me to just have it shipped to me instead of me going to the store, which Drive is an hour. 70 miles. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, 70 miles there and 70 miles back. And then I got to take the trailer with me. I had to, I had to buy a truck, uh, you know, mm -hmm. a full size truck. Then I got to fill the bed every time I go to Costco to have the food I need. Right. Um, no, having having that fast of internet is good. You could then, you know, do online schooling and homeschooling a lot easier if you're out there. Um, stream Netflix, watch your shows, have your business, whatever it is, out there, and you can do that type of stuff with that price point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like you were saying, it, it's five hundred dollar upfront. It does sound expensive, but if you look just the yearly overall costs that you're probably going to be saving in the long run, it's a deal. It's a it's right. a complete bargain. As soon as I saw this, I was like, I really want to sign up for this. Um, now, this is still in a, I believe it was an invitation only though beta right. for these prices. Right, so some I, I, I do have a submission in. Um, now I live, I'm not going to say where I live exactly, but uh, it's not rural and it's not urban, but yeah. Um, anyway, I went ahead and submitted one because I want to try it. I, I want to try it. I want to review it. I want to see what it's like as a service from a network technician you know, standpoint. I used to yeah. do this kind of thing for a living. What's the network like? Um, I think it'd be a great video. Um, and... You know, honestly, I've spent more than six hundred dollars on a video before, so why not? Yeah. Um, I mean, if I got because I submitted one too, if I got one, I'd I'd probably switch switch over to my farm to that. Now oh, they totally. did say they did say there are certain times where it does drop off, but that's very typical of any satellite. There's a if there's a cloudy day here, internet over there is shoddy at best. You right. know. Uh, your right. cell phone services actually that's the other thing too is it ends up half the time that we're out there your cell phone has better reception than than the internet yeah, <laughs> yeah. so but yeah no it, it's an interesting thing i'm glad that it's happening i'm glad we finally have some pricing um i'm really curious to see some early results from this beta because 
I know family who live in rural areas. You know, I, I have quite a few family who live in rural areas and they have DSL with five megs and, and it's five megs at the end of the pipe. And if everyone upstream is streaming Netflix, well, guess what? You get 128K. You're on an ISDN connection. Congratulations. Um, and uh, John, I know where your farm is at. Yeah. Uh, you're three miles off of the, the copper lines. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's... Yeah, this is encouraging. This is this very is encouraging. encouraging. This, and, and this, again, this is still beta. This is right. still the beta testing. And if it's anything like a lot of Elon Musk stuff, um, yeah, it's going to it's gonna explode. Um, this might even, this kind of even made me look into like buying stock in, <laughs> in them. I was like, oh, I, I, I think this is going to go someplace. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Not a stock right. tip, but yeah, just saying. <laughs> yeah, we are not financial advisors, nor are we providing any financial information or recommendations. <laughs> so please, cons uh, please consult a licensed professional. <laughs> yeah, licensed professional. Yeah. Um, so this is something that always that always bugged me. This next story, and this is probably yeah. going to be a really quick one. Yeah. But uh, er early on, Windows like Windows Seven, uh, Vista eight, eight, eight point one, always constantly getting that. Oh, you need uh, to update uh, your Adobe Flash. Uh, okay, uh. okay. <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, how about you go get it while I talk about this? I have mine here. I'm ready. Oh, okay. All right, then you introduce yours, and I'll go get mine. <laughs> I thirsty, John. <laughs> All right, you're not going to be here for my and pumpkin I can turn beer. Off my fridge. Yeah. Um, oops. I'm used to John going first, so I put him on. Uh, so I actually have a a pumpkin thing. Um, it's not technically a beer. This is a cider. This is the Two Towns Cider House Hollow Jacked Cider. Is it? It is an Imperial Pumpkin Cider at 8.4 percent, made with pumpkin flour and honey. Um, so I bought like four of these. I planned on having one on, on a standard, you know, craft computing video. I planned on having one on talking heads and I was going to give two to my wife. My wife ended up stealing one of my, I know bottles. what you're having. Yep. Yeah. You know what this one is. Yeah. I know what that is. It's pumpkin. It is pumpkin. I'll give you that. Hey, they have it's a class pumpkin. action lawsuit against them. Oh, do they? They do. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, you can get some money. Ooh. Uh, yeah, based, based, based on what? Uh, they said that they do only organic stuff. Uh, their cider contains only organic byproducts. Ooh. And, they only, and that was found to be false. Ooh. And so you can sign up. And it's from, if you've bought in two towns, so a little bit of quick beer news or cider yeah. news. Uh, if you've bought in any two town cider between the year 2017 to present, uh, you could be part of a class action lawsuit against two towns. And uh, Jeff and I have bought plenty of two towns between those three years. <laughs> yes. Heck, I bought in kegs of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I haven't gone the, that uh, far, but yeah. But yeah, there, there was options to say like, oh, how much did you buy? And I was like, where's the keg option? Yeah. It's not there. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, yeah, essentially you know, there's just a particular uh, acid they use that mm -hmm. is a not uh, chemically created acid that is supposedly they said it was naturally created and it wasn't. So, but um, so uh, so you introduce yours. So I got mine. Okay. This is a non pumpkin themed. So, uh, but it is. Ooh. But it is, Boo. Uh, but it is horror themed. <laughs> so, Bride of Dankenstein, Boo. West Coast IPA. <laughs> hey, someone asked me to drink this, so you're right. Uh, so, uh, this is by Mason Ale Works. So, it is a seven percent. Uh, I have no idea what the IBUs are, but so uh, yeah, I, I went into my favorite bottle shop today, and they had quite a few. Um, Halloween themed non pumpkin stuff. So I bought those. Actually, my favorite one they have swear wolves <laughs> from uh, uh, what we do in the darkness. We're not, what are we, swear wolves or werewolves? Yeah. Ooh, that smells like a really good IPA, too. 
It's okay. Just over here drinking my pumpkin cider. <sighs> oh, that's like a good old school West Coast IPA. Bitter, lots of citrus notes, a nice malt body. Mm. Oh, Jeff, you're missing out on this one. Ah, this is good. I, I love that it's still Halloween themed. It's great. <laughs> I, I don't know what to think of this one. Um, You've had it before, haven't you? I have not had this one before. Oh. Um, it's very sweet. It is. It's very, very sweet. Um, I mean, they try to basically make it taste like apple pie. Yeah. And and it's apple pie with pumpkin spice. That's, if you, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that very much sums it up. Um, yeah. It's very sweet. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's very sweet. Yeah. It's too sweet for me. I'm going to drink it. I mean, don't oh, okay. worry about that. Say, I'm going to drink I'll, it. I'll, I'll give you a mulligan if you want. No, <laughs> I'll drink it. It was like seven bucks. Of course I'm going to drink it. I know. Hey, I was going to suggest we do pumpkin spice old fashions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another time, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We did have another super chat. Uh, Spoon said Elon Musk has entered the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Tikaz at Craft Computing. Did you guys see the FSD beta that Tesla released on Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah, the full self-driving. Um, I I usually keep up on some Tesla news. I saw that something came out. I didn't read anything of it. Um, or read too much into it. So. And then $5, Novella Hub. Uh, what do I think about the G-Skill Royal Memory Kit? I got the 2 gig 16 silver set for 165 uh, this was asked by Andrew. Um, I do like the G Skill Royale. Um, they look phenomenal if you match your system to it. Otherwise, they look just gaudy as all hell. Um, and 165, I don't think is bad if you were aiming for that memory kit. Um, it's probably more than I would spend, but I'd be looking. Although I've I've bought for aesthetics before. If it's the aesthetic you're after, I think 165 is a great price. Um you're you're not gonna get the best performance at $165. I mean you could double up and get 32 gigs for that price at you know 3600 megahertz. Heck, you can get 64 gigs in a in a two-stick kit, dual 32s at 3600 for 225 right now. So for 16 gigs, it's a little overpriced. But if you had to have that look in your system, I don't fault you at all. Uh, I'm probably one of the only tech reviewers who would say that. Like, if you're going for aesthetics, go for aesthetics and, and you know, spend whatever you want. So, Jisco yeah. Royal has the bling bling going. That's exactly right. Okay, let's get back. We can get back into our quick mm -hmm. news and then that way we can scroll through because most of these are pretty quick uh yeah. but anyway so um if you've gotten this at all i know i got this uh there was a flash update adobe said hey or windows said hey you need to update your adobe flash and you went and did it and it wouldn't install for some reason You're like what's wrong with my computer well windows 10 with its latest update decided hey no more adobe flash for you we're taking it out yes Finally. Gosh. I, mean, I Hallelujah. Always, always hated those updates for the past three editions of Windows. It's always, been, you need to update your Adobe Flash, and then it takes forever. And that screwed something up somewhere else. Well, it's because you wrote your accounting software in Adobe Flash. Well, yeah, it looks pretty when you have this morphing, like. <laughs> <laughs> it was better uh... than Silverlight. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, so yeah, latest edition of Windows 10 is forcing users to uninstall Flash and is also preventing it from being reinstalled. Uh, it has actually added the Adobe Flash installer as a malicious package in the in the Windows Defender, um, which is hilarious. 
Yeah, it's basically like, no, 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 this is bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, All right. but yeah. So, say bye bye to Adobe Flash. Yep. Um, kind of, uh, I don't know, did you want to do so that little bit of NVIDIA news? Yes. Um, so, rumored in response, and this has been rumored for a while, some in-between SKUs for NVIDIA that have not been announced. Um, rumored starting yesterday, uh, before the Adobe launch, was the existence of a 3080 Ti and a 3070 Ti, which would slot in between the the 3070 and 3080 and then the 3080 and 3090 um although who knows where they're gonna land are they gonna give like all the 3090 cores but none of the ram and only 16 gigs of gddr6 not x to to a 3080 and call it a day yeah are they you know it's it's What's all going ass- on? we're all assuming stuff and they basically just listed out some tweets and some skews and right so okay if we took that idea and then we we put it up against the current 30 lineup um here's what we think we'll probably expect and they're basically expecting the 3080 ti to you know yeah. to land around like you know the 12 gig model right they're- so so here's the the rough numbers a 15 percent core count increase over the 3080 and just five percent fewer than the rtx 3090 for an unknown price point um yeah. It, and I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and say for nine ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Right? <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and, and, and no, say no, if so, a thirty eighty Ti exists, it's going to be nine ninety nine. No, no, no. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. You scroll further down there, they guess eight ninety nine. Eight ninety nine. They the well the the article the guy who wrote it guesses he guesses he's presuming it's going to be eight ninety nine just to undercut them. Yeah. You know, and there's a question mark next to all of his like, ah, this is what we're thinking it's going to be because they say it's in between and here's the in between mark. Right. Um, you know, so and here's the in between price point. Yeah. Um, but again, too, if it's anything like the 30 series, uh, will it even be in the market? Can you even get it? That's the problem. You can't right. even get the original stuff. Why? Why would we expect to get the brand new stuff that's coming out? Yep. You know, um, don't you mean super? Yeah, the 3080 super, super TI, whatever. Yeah, super TI triple X edition, GTR. <laughs> so, um, those are rumored to be coming out, and again, very rumored, just tweets, no date release, no actual info, just it's yep. gonna be five, ten percent better. That's it. Yep, you know, yep, no, nothing big. Um, but still interesting. Uh, it was nothing big and still unavailable. Yeah, still unavailable. <laughs> it it it's basically Nvidia saying we have a counterpunch. We haven't cocked our hand back. Oh, it's over here. It's over here. Yep. You can't see it. You can't see it. But we got it. We got it. Yep. You know, it's like, eh. I'll believe it when I see it in two quarters. Yeah. This whole Nvidia launch has just made me so frustrated with Nvidia as a whole um because all they did was rush a product out so they would win the news cycle even though they didn't have the product to rush out i mean like i I said for all intents and purposes the 3000 series cards don't exist unless they land in consumers hands in great enough numbers yeah to actually make sales um there there's reports of uh of some of like the largest distributors in in certain countries getting like 200 cards allocated yeah. when normally they would have thousands upon thousands uh like 200 cards that's it yeah th- Sorry. this is not the time to like hold back be like oh this is a rare gem to find no this right. is the time you wanted to oversaturate the market right you need you needed to that's how you would have beaten amd Mm-hmm. Even if AMD was competitive, you needed to saturate the market to where no one had the money to go and buy AMD's card. Now right. everyone has the money to go and buy AMD's cards. Because they've been it, waiting to buy the 3000 series cards. Yes. But they couldn't buy them. And all of a sudden, AMD presented a potentially better option. You played yeah. yourself. 
Exactly. And then they're just, I think they're just trying to save face with this TITs. You mm -hmm. know, uh, they're just like, no, 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 we, we have stuff to compete and, and it's, it's going to be uh, same price point or even cheaper. Uh, well, you don't have anything even on the shelf currently. Yep. So you got to put a box there before you can lower the tag and make a difference. <laughs> yeah. Now, yep. and then all that makes me want, though, even with all of that, I, you know, I'm just going to go buy a 2080. Because <laughs> it's probably going to be even cheaper. As long as it's 400 bucks, it's a great deal. Yeah. Well, Steve <laughs> already sold his. That's right. Um, um, yeah. I'll sell you so. mine before too long. <laughs> Actually, no, I've, I've got a 1080 Ti I can sell you. Yeah. Sell, give, same thing. <laughs> can I have my Quadro 5000 back? I sold that, man. Jeez. Talk. <laughs> I get, I'm, I'll give it to Rhett. It's, okay, okay. <laughs> Just pass it on down. Just pass it on down. Steve already bought a card, so. Um, Avender, Craft Computing, beer recommendation for you. Dragon's Milk Special Reserve. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time I go to the shop and I see Dragon's Milk, I'm like, is there another one around? Is there another do, one around? Do, do they have a spot next to it? Where's the special yeah. reserve? Where's at? the special reserves at? We don't Come get on. the special reserve out here. We get Dragon's Milk and we get a couple of other New Holland brews. We don't get any of the specialty stuff. Yeah, like we, rarely, we get their standard brews. Right. Once in a blue moon, I got yeah. I got the uh, Mexican Spice one year and I I, right. I bought a I bought a bunch of those and yeah. those are my favorite. But then like after that, I haven't seen anything trust me i'm twice three times a month looking yep. actively looking same same with me i i haven't been recently to the bottle shop i've been kind of letting my stock dwindle a little bit i'm gonna need to start hitting it again every month to to kind of restock and resupply for 2021 assuming i'll ever get to leave the house again but uh, oh, that you probably also have more videos you gotta start doing too i do right uh yeah all of a sudden my beer stock is you know, depleting at twice the normal rate. I know Jeff's going to um, be start, starting to pour all those bourbon barrel lights. Oh man, I just got to keep doing it, even for float plane. Uh, right. I'm assembling this trinket today and I'm drinking yep. a 14% <laughs> bourbon barrel aged beer. I actually yeah. looked up, I, I, I have a 2016 Firestone barley wine in my fridge. <laughs> I was considering opening that for a video. <laughs> It's like, um, oh, that might be pushing it a little bit. <laughs> I'm reviewing this keyboard, and here's a 14% beer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But no, we are well aware of the, the Special Reserve Dragons stouts. Um, uh, we actually had a couple of them at the Oregon Brewers Fest a couple years <sighs> years ago. Those are always good. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, Oregon extended the state of emergency through January 2nd. Well aware. Yep. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Unless, not to get political. Well, I can avoid the politics. Unless all you sons up, just man up, wear the masks, stay home. And this could all be done. Like, seriously. People are going stir crazy. And the problem is, they're... There's so many people who are not wearing masks and the masks became a political issue. Have you ever been wheeled in for surgery and the surgeon was there like finishing his cigarette and going, all right, let's cut you open. No mask, no washing hand. No, they've known for a hundred years that masks prevent the spread of infectious disease and infections and everything else. Yet somehow, <laughs> somehow COVID's the one that it doesn't matter. <laughs> really? They knew with the Spanish flu that masks prevented the spread of infectious disease. And yet it made three waves through San Francisco between 1918 and 1920. And here we are doing the same exact thing again. Social distancing, stay home, wear your masks, or go to jail. Those were actual signs that were posted during the Spanish flu in 1918. And we're fighting that same battle 100 years later. We know better. <laughs> we should be better. <laughs> Did you put the rant down really quick? <laughs> Just for a sec. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Did you they want only work to... if you use them? <laughs> they only work if you use them. Uh. Did you want to do the uh? A, uh. Was it the Intel? Intel. Yes. 
And as Scott says, do... my, my wife is an ICU nurse, is an ICU doctor. Wear a damn mask. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. So Intel, uh, not to be outdone by AMD taking all the news cycles for all the latest CPU things, decided to put out a new CPU release of their own. Oh wait, it was another security flaw found in the <laughs> Intel CPU code. This time, the researchers were able to extract the encrypted Intel CPU code used to update firmware and microcode for Intel motherboards. Now, this means a couple of different things. Number one, um, they can, either a malicious hacker uh, or a hobbyist can update microcode with their own custom injections now. Yep. So if you're a hardcore overclocker or maybe someone looking to extend the life of a Xeon, I'm just throwing it out there, um, and you now have access to change the parameters within the microcode, the way the, the motherboard actually works with the CPU, maybe unlock cores that were, or unlock multipliers that were previously locked, maybe unlock TDP, maybe do a lot of different things. I'm just saying that opens a lot of doors. <laughs> I'm also just, saying with those doors opened, there's doors for malicious activity as well. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, and and these go back really far. I mean, this goes back to, because uh, Intel has used the same chipset and this method, I think since the, uh, the Pentium, the Celeron, the Atom, yep. all of it. It's back it's, into like, 2003 i think is when is how far back this this yeah this so, uh encryption dates it, if it says intel yeah it's screwed you can technically yeah. do it with that uh no. <laughs> you know even if it's like at a, a second used hand store goodwill whatever it says intel yeah you could probably get into it because yep. it, it, that's how old uh, they've been using this. Um, now, if I remember correctly, though, it's still on hands-on. You have to physically be there. It's not like, oh, you know, you put this Google Glass on, you're surfing through the matrix, and you type in the password God or something like that. Um, but by the way, good. You know. By the sorry. By the way, good job. Good job on the comments, my, uh, but that one made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> continue <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah you're still you're still gonna need physical ass access to this computer um it's not like it's going to be you know um uh you know someone hacking in from outside of the system um and then two if you are going to do your own scripts or or, or reprogram it don't restart the computer because it won't boot then is uh kind of if i read this article correctly kind of what it was saying too so you'll basically, yeah. once you do it, you're screwed unless you right. somehow were able to put it back before you restart it. Right. Yeah. So the, what you can get out of it is a lot of interesting things. Right. Yeah. So um, like I said, for the hardware security guy, this is a nightmare. Um, although you still need physical access or malicious injection or, or a couple ways to do that. Um, but uh, for the hobbyist, and overclocker and thing. This could open a lot of different possibilities. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what the hacker community brings forward as far as performance upgrades, um, unlockability for previously locked SKUs. Like, no, yeah. That, like, sorry. can we just ignore the fact that a 10600 is a locked CPU and treat it as a 10600K? Mm. Uh, a 10100K? An unlocked overclockable four core eight thread chip for 85 bucks eh? yeah yeah what hey yeah. intel you want to compete unlock your chips again <laughs> <laughs> yeah no like you said though i'm i'm very interested in like a xeon uh see what a, a xeon can do with this or if if a hobbyist if anything manifests of this um yeah you know because those ships even though they're old they're still good you can get like you've done a couple of videos on those right you can get G xeon chips really cheap good morning it's not morning <laughs> so little bit just woke up ah uh, it's not morning time <laughs> no it's night time 
here, come here. Come here, you. It's still nighttime. Ugh. In fact, it's very late. Oh, very I'm late. Sorry. Oh. oh, hey, it's okay. You can sit here with me for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I'm really hungry. You're really hungry. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. Let's give Mama a message and see what she says. <laughs> Not to derail the show, but... <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone says anything mean right now... <laughs> Do you want to say hi to John? Hi! Do you want to hear? Where's your ear? There it is. There it is. Hi! Hi. <laughs> ah! Did you wake up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you hungry? Yeah, are you hungry? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, my son just went down too. And he's hopefully still asleep, but he'll probably wake me up at five in the morning. Go hungry. Really hungry. Do you want to go get really? a quick snack? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm really hungry. Okay. All right. Good night. Yeah, I'll, I'll make some ramen. <laughs> she says she's really hungry and needs a snack. <laughs> a little bit, everyone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she hmm. she opened my door and went, "Good morning, Dad." And I went, "No." Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to talk her back down off that edge. <laughs> uh, that yeah, I, yeah, I know. Uh, my I, my son every day in the morning, <clears throat> instead of morning, is just opens our door like wide open as fast as ball. I'm back. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Like, what time is one. it? Yeah. <laughs> well, he did. I'm back, he did baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. And he did it last night at like four thirty, and then <laughs> and then I'm like, buddy, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm tired. That's mm -hmm. why I'm here. Okay, <laughs> let's put you back down. Um, yeah. By the way, she is going to be in my first uh, premium video exclusive. Um, her and I are going to be building an AliExpress knockoff Lego set. Hence why yes. you got the text message. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, I don't have the link for float plane down there right now, but it will be down there very soon, as well as I will be adding some more tiers to the Discord um, to get access to premium videos. Uh, so regardless of what platform you want to support me on, you can support me on either one and you'll get the same perks. That is Discord access and, and premium video content. Um, there will be a basic perk for just discord access if you just want to join the server and then there will be an additional higher perk for you know extra content yep. um and the content will be things that i probably wouldn't normally post on my youtube channel or maybe it'll be like a one month exclusive kind of thing uh the first video is like i said it's going to be me and little bit building a uh an aliexpress off-brand lego kit uh which should be right up my alley <laughs> it's stuff that i like to do <laughs> you know i have a lot of legos around here and whatnot and this one kind of excites me for what it is but uh uh we'll start out building and see where it goes and we'll just kind of post that um but it, it'll be like retro computing or you know weird thought experiments or what if kind of things cocktail um, making yeah <laughs> yeah so just random things that normally would not do well on the youtube but you get to know me a little bit better is kind of my thoughts. Um, so yeah, join the float plane or the Patreon if you want access to that. And you can also get access to the super secret chat and the super secret after show. That's right. On Talking Heads. Live so. chat with myself and all the other hosts. Who would want to decide to stay up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um... So we have uh, some, this is actually nice, easy transition from tech to beer news since it's getting a little bit later. Yes. Um, but so we've done this, I think, one or two times before we've talked about this is, well, basically the top 10 ranked beers and breweries have come out by the um, Brewers Association uh, for the nation. And there was, was it 
2018-2019, we had a uh, a new champ, and none of us actually enjoyed that. And, well, <laughs> it came out again. And yep. guess who the champ is? Well, oh, look, it's Bell's Too Hearted. It's Bell's Too Hearted. Or as Rhett likes to say, Bell's Too Farted. Bell's Too Farted. And I have to, well, agree with him on that one. There really it was isn't just anything nothing special. There's nothing special. There's nothing special about that beer. Um, coming in at number two, Russian Rivers, Pliny the Elder, which is usually number one, has been number one except for the past two years. Yep. Great West Coast IPA. Uh, so if you like IPAs, maybe everyone's just tired of the hot flavor. Yep. Um, I think this the next one actually went up one sierra nevada's pale ale i think they were at four last year now they're at think, number three sierra and, nevada pale and i think that's a, a fantastic beer it's it's a very very nice acceptable drinking year-round type beer yes um i i enjoy that one then there is number four heady topper or uh the alchemist, From the alchemist. Heady, yeah heady yep. topper um it's a nice beer it's the grandfather of the hazies yep that's I've had it. It's, it's, it's solid. It's very solid. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Top five. Got no problem anywhere yeah. in, the, in in that spot. Hop um, slam was a surprise to me as well. Well, we both have have had that um, yes. sent to us. Now hop slam, I believe it's a triple. I think it's like a ten percent. Yeah. Um. So. I, again, I don't know what the qualifications are of these beers. You know. Yeah. Um. Uh, it goes from a, a, a hazy IPA to a triple IPA to zombie dust. Three Floyd's zombie dust is number six. And that's just a pale ale. Right. Um, then there's and a then, farmhouse ale. Then there's and a then farmhouse ale. And yeah. then founders KBS. Like, Which doesn't even, or uh, it's Kentucky. I was going to say Canadian, but yeah, the KBS. And it's like, yeah. Uh, that's tied with the farmhouse ale. I've right. had uh, Boulevard Tank Seven Farmhouse Ale. It's overpriced, not that good. Yeah. It's like twenty bucks for a huge bottle, and it's like, yeah, this is okay. Okay, um, right? Yeah. Although I think uh, Fresh Squeeze, the Shoots, Oregon made the top ten. Right. Um, and I, I have I one think... of these in my fridge. I've drank yeah. this on the show before. It's a it's a great beer. I think Fresh Squeeze when it came out was a groundbreaker for a lot of beer drinkers. It came out yeah, 5 years ago, something like that, 4 or 5 years ago. Maybe maybe a little bit longer. But uh I think it introduced people to that citrus IPA because it has a lot of uh, citra mosaic mm -hmm. yes. um, style hops, um, possibly Cascade, if I remember. I think it's like Cascade and Citra. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I think that one really introduced people into that more tropical note IPA, mm -hmm. and it was a huge, huge success. And uh, number 10, too, was also a very surprise for me was North Coast Old Rasputin. Old Rasputin. Which is a, a lot good of, beer. It's a good beer. A lot of people don't like it, though, because it's a very aggressive beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. It's um, it's very similar to the beer I had on the show this morning, which is the Kavatika Stout, which is a, a very aggressive, in-your-face coffee stout. Um, now, it's balanced with some sweet notes in it, but it's it's roasted coffee and, and yeah. dark chocolate and, and a real sweet malt that kind of sits on there and kind of a lighter mouthfeel in general. But it's an aggressive stout, being a non-imperial. It's only eight point eight percent. Yeah, um, and and like I think for your Cavada, I was saying like a little drying. Same with the Rasputin. It's yeah, it's a very dry. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, very. Don't agree with all of those, but I guess that's these are one of the top ten beers of, and I've had them all, and I don't agree with it, but whatever. Mm -hmm. And they did the top ten breweries. Uh, Bell's came in number one. Sierra Nevada, Russian River, Founders, Dogfish Head. Treehouse, Deschutes, The Alchemist, New Belgian, which I was kind of surprised with, and tied for 10th, Firestone, Walker, and Stone. Yeah. Um, I, I think New Belgium is on the list mainly because of the of the Dragon's Milk series. Or no, that's New Holland. We're, that's New Holland. New, New Holland is on there. New Holland, or no, no, New Holland no, is not. not. No, I was thinking Founders. Uh, uh, yeah, New, so Belgium. New, Holland, what, New Belgium, what do they do? They do, the... they, they do uh, Fat Tire and... Flat, yeah. uh, so eh. yeah exactly eh. Eh. they they have they have a really good uh, couple sour series that's pretty yeah. decent but my my I, problem with deschutes deschutes is a great brewery yeah it's not the best brewery in oregon it's not even the best brewery in bend mm -mm. <laughs> that's my problem with the shoot but they're, they're it's good but they're more nationwide they're nationwide 
Um, so I mean, I I would put I would I would easily put an Incasi over Deschutes. Yes, I fully um, agree. Well, I guess maybe I mean Deschutes does have some pretty good stouts though. Des- Deschutes has Blackbeat Porter. They've got yeah. you know that they've got some very solid beers. Yeah, I think Incasi through and through is a better brewery. I think yeah, I think through and through they're a better brewery, but I don't you know I don't know if they even have a barrel series. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, so uh, if you are looking for supposedly the best beers and the best breweries, here you go. This is what was voted for 2020. Um, And then some other quick news, something I really liked, and we've been talking about this throughout the whole year, well, ever since March. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Basically, wasted beer has been a big issue with this whole, well, pandemic throughout the world. And one brewery, or actually uh, one place in Japan, has been telling breweries, hey, instead of throwing it away for beer or expired beer or putting it uh, to sanitizer or whatever, how about we make some gin out of it? And uh, I am so on board. I'm down with that. And and the, (laughs) the best part about this, it's not breweries. They're telling bars, hey, hey, you got kegs? Yeah. We'll turn it into gin for you for the yeah. for the the bar. Yeah. Um and the best part once too it's is gin, it can sit on a shelf forever. Forever. And yeah. um so this this Japanese um distillery um is saying that if you they'll do it for free and it's a k- kuchi, I don't know, K I U C H I um whatever yeah <laughs> but anyway, this company is saying that uh, they'll actually even do it for free they'll distill it down for you for mm-hmm. free you just pay shipping yeah shipping there and shipping back to you that's all you have to pay and they'll give you they'll make you gin out of whatever beer they uh, you send to them um they are requesting you know a certain minimum amount um but essentially for every 100 liters uh of beer you send them you're gonna get uh, what is it? Twenty liters back? That's not something a bad like that. Conversion. So you're, you're, yeah. So they'll for uh, so, yeah. Uh, and every bottle is a 750 milliliter bottle. So mm-hmm. basically, you're losing about 80 percent, but still, right. you're getting a quality craft gin, which is about and, right for distillation. Yeah, and actually, they're even stating that they'll pre-keg it for you and put it into a gin cocktail, oh, so wow. that that way it can just go directly into your taps. And you don't even have to be a mixologist or a bartender. You can just screw it. You know, here's here's a gin cocktail nice. straight from the draft. Um, they'll do either one that you can, want. Can I send them a hundred liters of beer? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? Um, yeah. Like, there's so, a video. <laughs> that is it. That is really cool. Revive. I sent a hundred liters of my beer to, to Japan and had a gin cocktail made custom for me. Yeah. So they they end up getting. Uh, 20,000 liters of Budweiser from in, InBev themselves mm-hmm. sent them 20,000 liters and they got 4,500 bottles of gin and they named it Revive. Um, but it's this yellow looking. You're going to make so me drink one of those, aren't you? If I get a hold of one, it's kind of hard to get it. But uh, so it's a peppercorn. Uh, I'm, sh- uh, I'm sure I have contacts in Japan or can yeah, get a hold it's, of some. So it's no, a I, in fact, I know for a fact I have contacts in Japan. Uh, yeah, so they they told they said in, in here the article what what spice it's like if I remember correctly it's like a peppercorn uh, citrus um, juniper berry blend is what they do so everyone kind of gets like here's the same base whatever beers you give us that's you know essentially what you get mm-hmm. but um, yeah that's um, I would try that totally but I, I thought that was just a very interesting new way of doing uh something with some old beer yep so if you can get us some beer gin i would uh let me know in the comments below if anyone knows where to get a bottle how you know how can i obtain one uh dm me my dms are open dms are open um jeff i'd be happy to talk we'll either talk and, and and probably easily um pay for shipping and bottle and compensation. Yep. Uh, so, um, one more bit of information. So we got 
a little bit of game news, game and entertainment news. Um, and I think everyone pretty much that is in the world of gaming kind of already saw this. And I don't know if they saw this coming, but it's not, well, it, it's something game industries have done before. So, but if you were uh, looking to play Cyberpunk at all the, a couple days ago, sorry. <laughs> and uh, it's not going to be coming out for uh, another 21 days. Well, December 10th is now. They pushed the release date uh, 21 days, and they didn't tell anyone until, well, the day of. Um, kind of a, a, well, it's not 10, so I can't say that. Um, crappy move by the people over there. Uh, but they released a statement basically on their Twitter account. Hey, everyone, today we decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 by another 21 days. Basically, they also said, we're not going to move the date at all. This is the release date. And they backtracked and lied and said, we're yep. pushing it back essentially another month. Um, and a lot of people got pissed because actually a lot of people that were looking forward to this took the day off. Uh, if you go look at their Twitter account, there's some huge rants. <laughs> uh, there, there's some big blowback back. Um, and this isn't the first pushback of this game. If again, if you were looking forward to this, this is the Keanu Reeves uh, video game that got yep. were talked about what two years ago, I think at uh, CES or, or God, um, I think this. That was at the Xbox event in 2019. Was it 19? when it was announced oh, that was Keanu that when... Reeves? Because yeah. that's when Keanu Reeves was brought onto the stage at the Xbox event as part of Cyberpunk. Um, no, you're breathtaking. That yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, um, that one. So yeah, uh, <laughs> a year, almost two years ago, almost two years ago, a year and three quarters, and um, still not released. So, yeah, um, hopefully we'll see it in December 10th, but who knows? And hopefully, majority of the time that I've seen with games that do this, don't live up to the hype, unfortunately. That's been my experience. I, I don't know about anyone else's, but um, my biggest one that comes to mind was uh, Duke Nukem. Um, that was like pushback years, but um, was that Duke Nukem Forever? That was promised to be the big one, and uh, that was a horrible disappointment. So. <laughs> but yeah. So it's almost... So if anyone has uh, any chats, anything they want to talk about, if anyone's drinking anything else, let us know in the chat below. I say below just because my chat window is well below. <laughs> uh, where did my chat go? There it is. There you go. You're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did you want to talk any more about the cyberpunk or? Uh, that's pretty much all of it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it was just basically a, a big delay and everyone's pissed off. Everyone's pissed off. It's 21 days. Honestly, in 2020, I don't even care. Yeah. Like, I have so much other outrage to give than Cyberpunk being delayed another 21 days. And I was starting to get excited for Cyberpunk, finally. Like, I, I was making myself not be excited to be able to play it all the way back in, like, last December because it was supposed to be out, like, last year. And then they delayed it till March. And I said, okay, well, we'll wait till March. But then I knew it was probably going to be delayed again because that's how these things work. And so, I, you know what? I'm just going to wait until they say one week before launch, we're live, let's go. And and you can pre-download on good old games and, and things like that. Like, that's when I'll get excited for the game and start really looking at it. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, like two weeks ago, they said... Cyberpunk 2077 has gone gold. We will launch on November 19th. And two weeks later, almost to the day, they go, yeah, we're going to delay another three weeks. <laughs> and yeah. so I, I fell into that trap. I, I let myself get a little excited. Well, and 
majority of the time, like I said, when, when people have been excited about a game and it was, it, it took them, the problem was they didn't even announce the delay till like the day before it was going to be launched mm -hmm. was the other bad part was, you know, they, they, if they said, Hey, we got to push it back out another 21 days, a month before the, the initial release date. Okay. That's understandable. It was literally like 48 hours. I'm like, no, 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 no. Sorry. I uh -uh, can't do it. And people already took time off work, you know, sick leave and vacation time and, and stuff. That's in, uh, like you said, 2020, that stuff right now is actually precious because it's important. You know, you could have other issues you need to go deal with. You could have already done other things, you know, um, now they lost at least, you know, one of those days. <laughs> Jeff's... <laughs> no. And what is that? Is that a dinosaur? If you don't know what we're talking about or anything, it is uh, actually in the super secret chat of the Discord. So if you want to join the Discord, again, minimum donation or minimum join up cost is only a dollar. So if you can do that, or if you'd like to join the new latest and exclusive float plane, you can still get onto the Discord where we talk so many things. And I'm talking so many things. There's the standard chat. There is the exclusive talking heads chat where it's live every Wednesday. You can even suggest articles of what to talk about uh, on these shows. And we do actually read the, through them. Um, there is a food and beverage area. There is actually a responding to some on the air right now. So. <laughs> exactly. It's not like it's a dead channel. I've been, I did it earlier. Um, <laughs> there is a sports area. There's a music area. There is a, a, a whole humor meme. What do you find humorous area? There's actually even a, a what do we call it on the air? Crap posting? <laughs> Crap posting? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, there's a whole community era of buy and sell. There's, hey, here's my car. I have engineering problems or um, stuff like that. There's a buy and sell area. There, we even have a um, tutorial area where people are teaching you how to like weld or um, um, cock a window or a bunch of other stuff. It's all live. Fine done. point Just soldering. Yeah, fine point. Which would have been nice a year ago. Let me <laughs> Thanks, tell <Claw>. you. <laughs> uh, how, how to climb no, the, a, the soldering. <laughs> oh, how to climb a ladder one handed. I while had to figure that holding. crap out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a, honestly, we, we talk, it sounds like we're talking it up. It's not. Like I said, it is so overgrown that it's like, wow, this is actually a really super active Discord to where a year ago I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we can talk to everyone. This is super fun. Now this is like, oh, my God, I'm almost getting a panic attack just being in this Discord because there's so much activity. You know, right. you, you have to, like, limit yourself. Um, but again, too, if you're looking for an active community, uh, it's a very well-modded community, too. Um, basically, just don't be a jackass. Right. It's, it's past 10, right? Yes, yes. 10 or 3. 10 or 3. Perfect. Um, <laughs> it still goes on YouTube, John. <laughs> ah, they don't. They don't stream to this far to the end of the video. <laughs> my my audio is bad enough. They, they it'll be like, oh, he meant something else. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a great community. Minimum a uh, dollar um, again, or float plane. Um, more donations, like Jeff was saying, can probably get you better, higher tiers. So all that information is going to be coming out. So check out the description in the link, or it'll be in the link will be in the description below. That's what I'm going to say. So, but if you do have anything to talk about really quickly, um, Will Wheaton, what? Will Wheaton Law. Wes, the opposed. So uh, we are open to suggestions in chat below. Will Wheaton Law. What's the Will so, Wheaton I, Law? I don't know. Someone uh, put it in the chat. Sparked him. Will Wheaton Law. I think that is the uh, don't be a jackass. Don't be a dick. Yeah. Wheatonslaw.com. Don't be a dick. Um, which, strangely enough, is the opening line in the rules for my Discord. Yes. Um... Rule one, don't be a dick. Rule two, scene rule number one. Rule three, <laughs> 
please don't complain about the mod censoring you for being a dick. <laughs> you will lose. <laughs> and that's basically the rules. And then it, it, the only other rule is basically just the Safe topic. Safe for work content. Uh, yeah. Safe for yeah. work content. But uh, whatever topic you're trying to talk about, please try to keep it in that room. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we don't want to see your buy and sell in the standard chat area or the food area. We don't need to see memes in the, you know, uh, Klingon opera, which is our music area. We don't need to see any of that stuff. <laughs> Um, all meanings of the, and if you don't like Star Trek, I'm sorry, there is probably a little bit of a learning curve. All the rooms are Star Trek themed. If you've ever watched this channel, you know, we talk a lot of Star Trek. If that's up your alley, then great. We also do talk other nerd stuff too. Hey, hey John, we're not that upfront about how much Star Trek we talk. I, I, mean, know. I, I don't know where you got this impression that, you know, I live and breathe it. Um, but uh... yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what's what's your next video with your daughter gonna be, Jeff? <laughs> huh? Yes. What? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no, we don't like Star Trek here. What? 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 These aren't these aren't bottles constantly in your background. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Well, your your video's quality is probably good enough now for everyone to see that. Yeah. For some it's reason, still bokeh out. My mine's wacky tonight for some reason. <laughs> so, at least my audio. I turned my fridge off halfway through. Yep. No, your audio is better. I will say that. Yeah. There we go. I'm getting. I'm getting. Uh, I'm hopefully getting actually new audio next month. So, a whole new setup. Uh, actually, I'm gonna get two two boom mics, but ceiling mount them. Oh, nice! So, and then my brother's giving me a, a audio capture card mm -hmm. uh, or audio capture device. So, essentially, you know, something. Uh, you know, those two mics you gave me. Yeah, those those are the boom mics I'm gonna be using. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, but then I will still have to turn my refrigerator off because yeah. <laughs> those will <laughs> definitely pick those up. Yeah. Actually, if I if I get the Capture card. I can just go to back to a lapel mic or something. Actually, you need some uh, some RTX cards out in your garage so you can do uh, NVIDIA broadcast post processing. Well, you know, if someone wants to give me one, that'd be great. We can talk. We can yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> um, I do have two RTX twenty sixties, a twenty seventy super, a twenty eighty. Trying to think of if I have any others. Something like I have, that. I have some yeah. rare beer. <laughs> We can definitely talk. <laughs> we see now we're talking the same language. Oh, oh, oh! I don't know. Did you see this? So I got. Uh, remember that? Remember that mead I had at the tap room? The yes. Vikings blood. Yep. They came out with a, the the what's called o Odin skull. This is their fall edition of mead. Uh, so it's apple and cinnamon hopped mead. Nineteen percent. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff <laughs> can, can i have some <laughs> <laughs> can i have a card <laughs> that bottle was a lot less than 300 dollars. yeah and i know where you got that bottle yeah i know exactly <laughs> where you bought that bottle <laughs> <laughs> i'll sign it i'll sign it Hops Ooh, and brews. Hops that's and brews worth edition. something. That's worth that. Like kind of diminishes the value of the bottle. Actually, right. It's like getting a, a merchandise from Bite My Bits. It just no matter yeah. what, diminishes the value of whatever piece of th item that is. Yep. It's like I would just prefer a plain white T-shirt. Yep. <laughs> even even an orange T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, even one that yeah, it's like yeah. <laughs> Most things are better with orange. <laughs> Except Bud Light. All right. Well, it is ten past the hour. I think that's a great place to stop. Um. Yeah. Anything else, John? Anything to plug? Hops and brews wise. Hops and brews. Well, just you know, my channel. Whatever. Do that. Subscribe. Do, you you like don't. that? Subscribe. Don't. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care. 
Just putting my heart and soul into my channel. Jeez. <laughs> if, if you like the beer content on this channel, make sure to jump on over to Hops and Brews. Link is down in the video description below. Give him a subscribe. Watch some of his, of his videos. He goes a lot more in-depth than I do into the beer stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, if, if you want to learn to make a cocktail, then I've, I've been on his show a couple of times to show you how to do that. So. Yep. Uh, we, we've had plans to do it, but... Well, March sucks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... Uh, I still have that bottle, by the way. I John. know! <laughs> <laughs> you, you've moved into a new house and, and have already settled down. <laughs> yeah, so uh, John and I had plans like in, what was that, November? It's almost been a year. It's, yeah. It's been a year. Yeah. Um, John and I had plans to, um, to open a bottle and do the cocktail that it was inspired by. It was uh, whiskey, whiskey sour, sour, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. We were going to do a whiskey sour cocktail, and he had a whiskey sour inspired beer. So we brought the bottle over one day. We drank a couple beforehand. We then filmed a Talking Heads episode, and then we were like, oh, we'll shoot your video afterwards. Well, right after it, we're like, uh -huh. nope. 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 It, it was one of those times because at the time... John needs Jeff, to sober up because he needs to drive home at 1 a.m. It was one of yeah. those, those nights. It was one of, well, you live right next to Steve, so it's yeah. like, oh, okay, I'm even closer now. Not too bad. You know, yeah. I, I can have one more, and it's fine. Um, if I have it really quickly, it won't hit me till I get home. Okay. Uh... Now we talk too long to chat. You know? yep. Yeah. <laughs> like we're done. And exactly. then... And then, you know, time after time, it was like, oh, yeah, I'm too tired. And then tired in December, I moved. And then in yeah. January, it was CES. And then February, it was, we were just both so busy. And then March, March it. it's like, we can't see each other anymore. <laughs> so I've been cellaring your beer for over a year now. Hey, there we go. Yeah. Um, so, so eventually that collab will happen. That collab, yeah. Because we, we even had, um, even before that, we were trying to do the flip. Yep. So yeah, yeah, th that's right. That one's been on our list for a while too. <laughs> yeah, so ah. we, we got that to do. Uh, there's lots to do. Yep. So we have a lot uh, in the backlog. Yeah, we have a lot. So soon as soon as we can see each other <laughs> properly. Hey, it's Techno Tim. Hi Tim. Hi Tim. <laughs> uh, let's see, Mystery Technology. Greetings from the Rogue Nation area. Hello. Not sure if you mean the Newport area, Rogue Nation, for, uh, you know, Rogue Brewing, Beer? or or if you mean, like, Rogue Valley. But either way, cheers. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us here on episode 156 of Talking Heads, your once-weekly live show of the latest in beer and tech news. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow John on Twitter at Hops and Brews. And uh, make sure you subscribe to both of our channels. If you want to take part in the Super Secret After Show, make sure to follow the link down in the video description to the Patreon. And hopefully next week, the float plane, I'll remember to include that link, uh, where you can get exclusive access to the Discord server, chat with myself, John, Rhett, Steve, all the hosts from Talking Heads, and join the ever-growing community over there. Uh, make sure to join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time for the latest in beer and tech news. And we'll see you later. See you guys next week, or two weeks, whatever. Yeah, I'll, be in I'll see you next week. Yeah, there you go. That'll I'll work. be here. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>